Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. My name is Levi Woods, today's Friday. I'm in a bit of a rush today because this job I was working on went a little bit longer than I wanted to this week. So I've got a day to build like this epic Viking crown. It's gonna have this crazy repose ram's head or deer head on it, but I'm not gonna get to that today. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw together the crown portion, we're gonna put them, some antlers on it. It's gonna look something like this. It's gonna, this is gonna be the repose piece. Not gonna do that, that's gonna be in a later video. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this brass piece and we're gonna mount some antlers on it, something like that. So, woo, make sure they get on the right way, but it's gonna be something like that. It's gonna be pretty effing cool. So stick around. Now, I usually use 025 for my crowns, but today I'm gonna use this sheet of 032 inch. So I think it's gonna be a little bit more robust. It's still pretty flexible, but when it's done, it is gonna be amazingly robust. Now, today's video, I actually don't need a lot of stuff, really. I've got, I'm gonna use this piece of steel. I'm gonna cut out the piece for attaching the actual antler. Build a bracket behind here so that these antlers can screw into it. So I guess I'm gonna need some screws. The customers provided some plates and we're gonna rivet them on. Today I'm using uh, eighth inch by three eighths inch round head brass rivets. Let's talk for a second about safety because I think it's super important to have safety in the workshop. It doesn't require a lot. Like I like to protect my hands. I usually wear a set of gloves. I often wear a full face respirator. These are like the organic ones for vapors if I'm using any chemicals and always a pair of earmuffs. Super important that we wear those. Safety important, safety, 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 always in the shop. Anyways, aside from that, not a lot of other tools. Uh, I'm gonna use a drill today. We're also gonna use a hammer, this basic hammer like that, and a hacksaw, things I keep around all the time. Uh, down in my drawers here, if you are really trick, you might have one of these little guys. This is a air hammer for setting those rivets even faster. Um, you might need a little chunk of steel, something small like this is going to work great. I have a hole drilled in it so I can actually put the bit for my rivet set into this hole so I can set the rivets negatively if I want. We're also probably going to need some of these and maybe some of these. What else are we going to need? Probably this little guy. This is like a little stake that I made a couple years ago. So I think that's pretty much it for the tools we need for today's video. Of course, we'll see how that goes. I have tons of tools here and I'm sure I'm gonna come up with something else that I need. But for now, that's what I'm gonna start with. Let's get to it. Okay, so I'm like two seconds into this project and I realized I've already forgotten some things. I'm gonna need a Sharpie, a tape measure, I'm gonna need a square. I'm sure there's other things. Oh, I'm gonna need something to cut the metal with. Maybe a mechanical cutter and definitely my power file. Okay, so we have to do a tiny bit of math. With the padding around his head, we've got a good measurement at 26 and a half. Now, because I'm gonna put a bracket behind it, I wanna also add another half an inch, and then we're also gonna add an overlap, so plus three quarters of an inch. So we're looking at 27 and three quarters. Now, for the width, we have to look at the plate. Now, this, this measures an inch and just over seven eighths. And I'm gonna put a bead roll on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna put a quarter inch bead. So I'm gonna make this, step it up a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch at the top and we'll call this two and a half inches of material. 27 and three quarters by two and a half inches is what I need to cut out of my sheet of brass. Well, here's another tool I didn't tell you guys about, a little scriber. So I'm just gonna scribe a nice square line on this so we have a place to start our measurement from like it's gonna cover it. And now, I on one of my longer rulers. Now I know we talked before about cutting this piece of material, but I have this glove that I like to use for cutting. So let me just show you how it works. Down in the description below, you'll find links to almost all of the tools that I use in this video. But unfortunately, this cutting glove was custom made a couple of years ago and it is not for sale anywhere that I can find online. Well, I just walked over to the drawer and realized I lied to you completely. I grabbed two more tools. I grabbed a little three inch mini polisher, 
which is just a regular straight roundy round. And I grabbed a little three inch orbital. It's got this little uh, chuck or whatever this thing is on here that the pad kind of spins non concentric. It spins in a, so it doesn't leave a swirly pattern on the material. So I'm gonna zip over and just give these brass pieces a quick brush up, three, 320 grit and then 600 grit. It's gonna take just a few seconds. Well, I've marked a couple of lines on here so I can lay out the bead roll. I know that looks like a little something, but that's going to come out no problem. We'll, uh, it's just a little low spot from when I was cutting it with the glove. You know, that glove cutting is not all that great. Anyways, I'll uh, fix that up with a hammer once I get it through the bead roller. I was thinking about the join and the overlap, and I'm thinking, well, why don't I put the join in behind this face plate? We've got lots of room, so I can easily hide it. This is a fairly expensive sheet metal tool. It's called a bead roller, and what it does is it puts a bead into flat material. Push on the pedal and it turns. You're gonna feed this thing through. And before I do that, let me curl this a little. Okay, that's a little better. Now, don't think that I ran this through the bead roller or something. I literally just bent it over the horn of my anvil. It's pretty crude. It's not really round. I just wanna get the basic shape. When I run it through the bead roller, it's it's helping maintain the shape of the curve, not taking a flat piece after I bead rolled it and then try to curve it. It's way easier to curve it while it's flat. We have to give these plates a little bit of a curve. Before, I was gonna put the seam at the back and get this all figured out, but now I'm gonna put the seam at the front, so basically this is where the seam is gonna be. So I need to figure out where these plates go. This is the order of them, so this one's gonna be center back. So we just wanna make sure that the spacing is right. And we leave enough space for this skull. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center up this back one, and then I'm just gonna take and just leave a little tiny gap in between each one because that'll leave us a bit of space next to the skull which will look nice. Of course I'm rushing and there's something I completely forgot. I need to punch some holes in these guys so I need to at least center punch them. I should have done it before they were curved. It would have been way easier. suddenly starting to look like a crown with all these pieces on it spaced out properly. So they're all taped in place. I'm gonna clamp each one individually and then we're just gonna punch right through. Okay, last one. That is uh, grueling work, punching all those holes. This little guy is like a three ton punch and uh, it is hard to squeeze through those two layers of uh, bronze and brass. These plates are pretty thick. That's about the extent of this machine. It's flexing in the frame and uh, it's hard on me as well. Anyways, now I'm gonna use uh, a power assist and the compressor to set these rivets. Now this little tool is ridiculously fun. Basically what it does is you set your solid shank rivet in there, clip it off, set it against something hard, in this case we're using the anvil, and you just pull the trigger, it does the rest. It's pretty great. So I popped a couple of rivets in there, I'm just gonna put a piece of tape over them so the heads can't fall out, and we can just power rivet right through that 
with the tape on there. So now I just need to trim these back. So on the inside, nice and tight there. And now we'll do these three. We kind of want those antlers to be out like that, at that angle. We're going to have to make a piece of steel that comes down here, joins across, comes up, and then angles back so that we can mount this directly onto it. So that should be pretty easy. So you know, the secret to this glove is the micro blades in the fingers because it just works a treat. Literally just... Now one of the things I don't love about this cutting glove is that it leaves the edges a little bit rough. I absolutely love this tool, so of course I've got to use it in this video. As always, in the description there's links to all of my favorite work truck tools, and if you use those links then I get a little kickback from Amazon, so that helps me produce these videos. As you guys know from watching my channel, that I like to hit things with hammers. So this is one of my favorite parts of a job like this. Let me get it all lined up in the jaws here. And now, just get like a, a medium sized hammer. Just kind of bash it a little bit. Now these aren't super precise little things. Just gonna line it up. Put it put back somewhere in there. There, that should about do it. Now we just have to curve it that away. So of course I forgot to hit record, but basically what I did was I put this piece of metal here and I gave it a couple of whacks with this big rawhide mallet just to curve it just a bit. It doesn't need a huge amount. And now we can take a look at the, the crown. And of course I was thinking that this was going to go on the outside of the crown and then the, the repose was going to go over it. But now that I'm looking at it, I probably, it's slow enough profile. I probably have enough room, maybe I can sneak it inside and have this sit right flush up against the skull. thing is going to be to drill out a couple holes here. We'll countersink it from the back and we'll be able to drill straight up into these antlers. I think they're going to look pretty awesome just like that. So I've marked the two holes and I've got it in the vise. Well that just shows you how hard that antler is. Well this was a failure. We've got two screws broken off supposed to go on this horn right up here so there will look like some epic beast something like something like uh, that which is looking pretty fun pretty cool I think it's gonna be great but I'm gonna get to it Monday for now I'm gonna grab a beer because I'm beat and I'm gonna go to a soccer game you guys have a great weekend remember hit the like button down below and subscribe see you very soon